Okay, here we are. This is week four, second recorded session. And I've got a couple of things that I would like to clear up tonight. Last night I uh, did a demonstration on how to make this hang tag appear on the bottle. And after I was done demonstrating it, I thought of another pretty interesting way that I could do the same thing. And I thought, you know, this might even be an easier way for you to do this. So I thought what I would do is start off by giving you a demonstration of how I did this uh, so that you can see that there are more than one ways of accomplishing things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and zoom in on my label. And I'm going to take these two guys right here and I'm going to move them out of the way because this is what I'm really working on. And there's this guy right here, which is grouped. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do object ungroup to ungroup this thing. I also lose my drop shadow, which is okay. But now I can select this back card. And as I explained to you before, this back card has a hole punched into it. And what I want to have happen is I want to have the illusion that, uh, so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go edit copy. Okay, so I'm going to start off by copying this card just so I have a backup. The object here is to make this thing look like it's wrapping around the neck and around this uh, label. So to do that, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get my pen tool, and I'm going to start, click, click here. And I'm going to come around to the inside of this, and I'm going to drag a line out like this. Now, again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to really make this like super good. I'm just going to give you an idea of how it's done. So there, and if I want, I can come over here and click and retract this. Then I can come up to here, and I can click, and I can t continue coming around however I want to come around to make this thing look. And I end up getting something that looks like that, which I'm not totally crazy about so what I'm going to do is um, edit undo pen there we go and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this guy and see if I can make that circle look a little bit better that looks a little bit better it's not great but it looks a little bit better I think that works okay that'll be good enough then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a stroke on it and I'm going to remove the fill Okay, so now what I have here basically is, if I get my regular selection tool, I got something that looks sort of like that piece and how it would run through this, um, this background here. Okay, if you come and look pretty closely at this, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There it is. Okay, it's still got a bit of a gink in it, but that's all right. I mean, again, I'm not going for perfection here. I'm just going to try to give you an idea. So once again, I'm going to select this guy. Select this guy, bring the fill forward, and I want this to be kind of like a lighter color, so I'm going to go for a lighter color. And I'm going to, let's see, let's go to the view menu and fit artboard and window. And that's probably, I could probably go to two. So yeah, let's go to two so I got a slightly larger line here. All right, so now I'm going to zoom back in on this so we can see what's going on. And there we have it. So I have my I have my wire. This is the wire, and this is a little bit different than what we did before, which was basically to do half and half and then maneuver them around. But I'm going to do a very similar operation with this where I'm going to keep this selected and go to the, um, the object menu and go to path. And again, I'm going to outline the stroke. And so now I have the stroke outlined. So I have a graphic shape here, and I have the graphic shape back here. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to shift select this. I got them both selected. I'm going to go up to the window menu, and I'm going to open up Pathfinder. And down here in the second row, you know, we have things like Unite, Minus Front, uh, Intersect, all this stuff. But down here we have this one, which is called Divide. And if I click on the Divide with both of these selected, I get this where this thing has now been broken into parts. If I go object ungroup, okay, I can now 
come in here and I can select parts like that part right there. You see where it ends? Let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. Now, that section breaks there. So if I come in here and if I hold down the shift key and click there, I now have that section and that section. And if I hold the shift key again down and click here, I have that section. So I have one, two, three sections. And if I click on this, Unite, those three sections turn into one piece. Now, if I want, I can click on this section here and hold down the Shift key and click on this section here and that section there, and I can unite, unite them. And, 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 of course, it'll go uh, gray because that's, that's what it'll do. But I'm going to change it back to white and I'm going to remove the stroke, and I end up with this. Now check it out. Look, over here, I have part of my, I have part of my back, and I have my front going in looking very natural. But if I move this thing, look, if I move this out, you see what I get right there? I get that, that hole right there. But if I delete this, and if I go uh, edit, paste in place, what I do is I paste back the one that I copied. Now all I got to do is click on this guy here and go Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. And look at that. Let's go View, Fit Artboard and Window. And I know that this doesn't have, I told you we put a little tiny bit of a stroke on this, of a, a, just a very light gray, so that you could see a little bit better. And uh, let's see, it's one point, it's probably too much. Well, let's see what it looks like with one point. There, take, check it out. So now we're going to come in and take a look at this. And there you go. See, now you've got something here that looks pretty good. It shows, it sh again, I, there's a little bit of thing going on with this hole in here, which I don't really want, but uh, what are you going to do? Now, what I can do here is the same thing, where I can come up here with this now, and I can click on my direct selection tool and click on that I'll click on this line right here I guess and I'll drag this line back bring this line back to about here all right and actually that didn't really work the way I wanted it so let's go control Z and let's just try it with individual points there and now let's try it see how that works and I think that worked a little bit better bring it to about there Right, let's go view, fit, artboard, and window, and let's see what we got. So it didn't really distort it all that badly. It looks to me like it's basically, yeah, it's pretty good. So now what I can do is come in again, and uh, this is the same, this part of it is the same process as before, but this was a slightly different way to handle this. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to get the direct selection tool first. I'll zoom in again. And once, once more, I'll just get my direct selection tool and click on this one little point right there. And let's just very carefully drag that back until it hits about there. And now if we zoom out, go view, zoom out, and zoom out again, you can see that that looks pretty good. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Come over here. Whoops, I went too far. Way too far. I'm back until I find my bottle. I don't know where it is. Let me go view fit our board and window, and then I'll zoom in again on it. Come over here, zoom in on this. There we go. Okay, and this one here uh, probably just needs to move forward a touch. Just move it up a touch, right about like that. And then this guy here just is going to move back to about like that. And that's pretty good. And now what I will have to do with this, though, is I will have to modify that curve slightly. I think I again went too far. It's very difficult when you're zooming like at this rate. There we go. Let's do it again. Let's zoom in again. Yeah, so do you see how that you see how that bowed in a little bit there? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come over here with this thing and I'm going to grab this and I'm gonna pull this in just a little bit until it gets more even. There, that's really pretty good. Again, we're playing around with these control arms just to get this to look relatively even. And this, if I come back here, if I remove the, uh, the stroke on this thing, I might be able to uh, just remove the stroke on it altogether. 
And if I go view, zoom out, and bring this up a little bit, if I put a drop shadow on this, it may be enough. Let's see if it is. Go effect, stylize, drop shadow. And I'm going to probably go uh, three. Let's go three. And let's go three. And let's go blur one pixel. And preview it. What do you say? Can I see anything? I'm mm, not seeing anything. What's going on over here? Cancel. I see something else being affected. I don't know why that's being affected over there. This is what I want. The art board and window. What's going on over here? Nothing. That was weird. So I zoom in on this again. Effect. Um, stylized drop shadow. Let's try it one more time. There, okay? The only thing is it's on the wrong side. So I'm going to start. There we go. There we go. Up oh, too far. One. I'm going to actually come in here and I like to change this to pixels. So I'm going to go 3px. Okay? And I'm going to go 3px. And this I'm going to make 1 px hit OK and now if I zoom this view fit artboard and window you got something that looks pretty good okay so I just wanted to show you that this is what I showed you last night doing it this way I think actually technically this is a better way to go so I just wanted to come back in and give you an idea that there is other ways that you can do all of this stuff. It's very important for you as uh, graphic designers to know that, that uh, Adobe Illustrator is an incredibly flexible program. And um, there's a good demonstration of it. It's, it's not entirely different than what we did before, but how we, how we handled this area in through here by using the Pathfinder and creating objects and then just carving the objects up automatically using the programs and then reassembling them gives us a great illusion of this thing. I think even better because this thing, if you really look at this up close, that, see how that conforms to that shape beautifully? That looks very real. And if you come over here, what I like about this, I got a bit in window again. What I like about this is come over here. And by doing it this way, you actually get a little bit of that shadow falling in over top of that thing, even making it more realistic looking. So uh, keep that in mind when you uh, do this, or if you try to do this, that this is maybe even a better way to go than what I showed you to do last night, okay? So that's that one. The other thing that I want to do before I get to the critique is I wanted to go back in and I wanted to show you the wine box the wine box because I did have trouble with this last night. And so what I did was I sort of put the elements together to uh, create this. And let me explain how I did this. This was nothing more. I showed you how to do this. Nothing more than creating that little bit of a panel there uh, using the gradient the same way that I used the gradient here, but in reverse so that this matches up with that edge up there. And then, of course, it goes to light. I then just took the logo that I created, which was um, all of it was punched out of uh, the background of white. So it prints with this nice gradient coming through it, and it looks really cool. And uh, that's also done uh, using the Pathfinder minus front to do that. So that's how I made the top. And the front, you saw me, I just set some type. I set some type. Uh, the, the only thing that you need to know is I used one of my modified bottles. I took one of my wine bottles that I created in 3D. But in order to make this work, what I had to do is I had to expand it. So I did this last night, but just so that you remember, I select the wine bottle. Maybe I can show you. Let's go uh, file open. Let's see here. Uh, wine box. Is it the wine? Where is it? wine bottle. 
I think that's it. Yeah. There's my wine bottle. Let's see if this layer is locked. That's probably what it is. They're locked. Okay, so here's my, here's my, my, uh, my wine bottle. Uh, you can tell that you're looking at the 3D model because when it highlights, it only highlights on the edge that I created. And I want to show you this. If I go to my appearance panel, um, I can actually click on each of these little segments. I'll have to do it with the group selection tool. Hold on because they're grouped. Let's go group selection tool. And if I click here, you see the 3D revolve? And this section is, is, is um, showing. If I hide the 3D revolve, that's what you get. That's my, that's my edge that I use to make my revolve. And I'm just simply hiding it. That's all I'm doing is I'm telling the appearance panel to hide it. If I want to bring it back, I just click on it and it brings it back. I can do the same thing with the top up here. I can come in, I can hide the top, and there is the element that I use to create the top up there. So, you know, again, this is not very difficult to do. The, the most difficult part of it is to get a bottle like this and using as few points as you can. Notice that I have one point in here. I have to have that one point there to get that curve going like that and that curve going like that. And I also want to show you something. Because of that point right there, I want you to see that I get that little deformity there. It's a little bit annoying, but there's not much you can do about it because you need that point. This does create, so view, fit, artboard, and window, this does create separate elements. So this area here is one area when you go in and, and are working on your 3D model. Um, this is another area. Maybe I should show you that so that you could see what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to go preview, and uh, I'm going to come in map art, and this is what I wanted to show you. This is what I, I'm talking about. These are, my, these are my surfaces. Let me see if I can make this thing a little smaller. I can't really. These are my surfaces. Watch as I go through the surfaces. There's one of the surfaces showing. There's another one. There, look, that right there was created from that point to that point. That's the problem. Each one of these little anchor points is going to create a surface. That's the surface created from that point to that point. Now, if I continue down, I have the surface that goes from that point to that point. That's what's going on here. If I go to the next one, I've got the surface that goes from here to here. And then the next one is the surface that goes from there to there. So, you know, you have to keep this in mind when you're working on this because you're going to be putting elements, symbols on these surfaces. And you have to know where, like for instance, if I wanted to put Rose, Rosa Seca on this one, I'd have to make sure that I got on that surface. Let's say I wanted to put a little line of text up here too. I'd have to know that I'd have to go back up to there, and then I could apply it onto that surface. So I hope you understand that. You really, you really have some very interesting um, possibilities with this. You can put bands of color on this. You can put text on it. You can put objects that you create on it just as long as everything that you try to put on it has been turned into a symbol. There it is right there. In here, I got just a label symbol in this particular project, so it's not like I have a bunch of stuff. And there is my label symbol. I'm going to get out of here for a second, so let's get out of here first. Hit cancel and hit cancel. And this is my, this is my symbol, and you can see that this is actually an instance of the symbol. And how you can tell that is in, instead of having just this little uh, red parameter with the, with the anchor points on the corner and a little dot in the middle. This has a little plus sign in the middle. Symbols usually are are uh, defined in the middle by using that little plus sign symbol. So that's what this is. This is a an instance of my symbol. Here is my symbol. There it is, and it's called label. So if I delete this thing here, I can very easily just click on this guy and drag it out. And if I want, I can drag out another one. I can drag out as many of these symbols as I want or need. 
And each one of these things are just what's known as an instance of the master symbol. The master symbol is based on the original art. Let me throw this away. Let me throw this one away. And let me throw this one away. Give me a second. There we go. And let me bring this one down a little bit because if I wanted to, I could come in here with this selected and I'm on a PC, so I can right-click this, and you see where it says break link to symbol. If I click break link to symbol, watch what happens to this. It becomes nothing more than a vector graphic. That's all this is. It's just a vector graphic, and I can select the whole thing. Uh, right now, it's, it's ungrouped, it looks like. See, so I can move this thing, and I don't want to do that. But I can select the whole thing, and I can go object group, and I now have a instance that has been broken apart, made back into the graphic, which kind of leads me to my wine box, because that's more or less how I did this. I broke it apart, and I made it into just a regular old graphic. As you can see, watch, when I zoom in here, this is just a regular graphic. It is no longer uh, an instance of a symbol. The reason that I do this is because I'm going to try to distort this panel to make it go on top of my box. And it really isn't going to work properly as, a, as an instance of a symbol. You can't really distort these symbols using this mechanism, this method. So I know enough to break the symbol, break the link to the symbol, bring it back into regular old vector shapes that I can then modify the way I'm about to modify it. Okay, so, you know, again, I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of an explanation of maybe what I did and why I'm doing it. Let's go to the view menu. Let's fit everything in window. And as you can see, I created a side panel, which is nothing on it. It's just a very simple side panel. If you were here last night or if you've watched my, if you watched my recording last night, you'll know that for some strange reason that I can't really explain to you, I had lots of trouble putting my symbols onto my three-dimensional box. So instead of having you go crazy trying to do that, I thought what I would do is show you a, another option that you can use. Again, this is sort of a backup option, but it is a legitimate option and it works and it's fairly easy to do. So I tried to show you that too last night and for some reason it choked as well. So I'm very hopeful that it doesn't choke on me tonight. I already started by putting the side on, but what I want to do is I want to show you how to put the top on, and I want to show you how to put the front on, okay? So I'm going to bring this over here, and I'm going to line it on the top, something like that. Then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to choose my free transform tool, and I want to get the free distort property. And I'm going to start off by coming over here, clicking on this, and I'm going to drag this in until I get it to line up with the corner, which is not quite right. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit so I can get a little closer, and maybe it'll be a little easier for you to visualize. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to keep tinkering with this until I get this to sit where I want, which is right about there. Okay, so you see how I got this thing right on that edge. So now what I want to do is I want to come up here, and I want to click on this guy. And I want to bring this one down, and I want to lay it over here on that edge. And then I want to take this guy right here, and I want to drag this guy down. And you'll notice that this thing's going to start distorting a little bit on me. So I'm going to have to tinker with this to get it a little bit, get it to where I want it. So I go there. And this guy here is going to have to be messed with somewhat. And this guy here is going to have to come down. Bring this guy down like this. Okay. This guy here. Yeah, this guy's now this guy's giving me trouble tonight. There we go. Get it over there. That's kind of it. And then we're gonna keep working it until it goes where you want it to go. It it's sometimes is a little bit stubborn and then this guy here I think I'm going to try to do is move this over first let's get that in place that should be right about there 
All right, and now I think I have to zoom over a little bit so I can get a better shot at this corner. And I click on this guy, and I'm going to just carefully bring this guy over until it gets where I want it over here. And you just keep tinkering with it, and eventually you'll get this thing to lay where you want it to lay. See, it's getting closer, but it's, it's very stubbornly, because this is a rather extreme, what I'm doing here is placing it at a rather extreme angle. So you just got to keep working it until you get it where you want it. And that's probably pretty good there. Let's get this side straightened out, move this in. That's going to come into about there. We're getting close, but it is stubborn. There's no doubt about it. It is very stubborn. And we're almost there, I think. Yeah, see, it keeps, it, keeps wanting to, it keeps wanting to go off in its own little direction. So you just got to keep playing with it and, and hopefully get the thing where you want it to go. They finally get the thing where you want it to be. Uh, you know, and again, it's, it's, it's very stubborn. It keeps coming back and, and playing with you a little bit. Keep messing with it until you get it where it should be. And it's pretty close now. It's a little bit off down here. Let's see. That more like it. All right, it's not too bad. You can see it's not the easiest thing to do. It's rather tricky. All right, and this guy's out just too much. Let's bring it in a bit. And then this thing here. Oh boy! All right, almost there. All right. Well, you know what? I'm gonna call it done right now. There. Okay. Now this thing here, I'm not sure. Oh, it's got a stroke on the edge. You don't want that, so you want to get rid of that stroke. This you can do the same thing. You can come in here and you can tinker with this little edge, and you can get that edge lining up just a little bit tighter, a little bit better. Okay, and same with this. You can come down here and you can get this lining up a little tighter, a little better. There. Okay, now let's take a look, see what we got. View, fit, artboard, and window. And there, you see we got two of these edges, all right, or two of the sides. You got the top side and, the, and this side here. Now the tricky one. This is going to be the front panel. And I'm going to bring the front panel over. And here's the, here's the good news. The good news is this is not anywhere near as extreme as the top is. That doesn't necessarily mean it isn't going to be stubborn and it isn't going to fight me. It's still going to give me a little bit of a problem to do this. And again, as I say, if your, if your uh, Adobe Illustrator program is working good, you probably don't even have to do this because you would be able to, um, you would be able to do this as symbols uh, in your 3D. So I'm going to click on this, click on this, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to see how quickly and easily I can get this to lay in place. Bring this up to there. That's not bad. This one's got to come up until it hits right in here. Okay. And this one is the tricky one because you can't really see it. Bring it up like that. Let's see where we are. I don't know whether that's too low or high or what. Let me just bring it up a little bit and see. There it is. That's where I want it to be. So I'm going to click on this now, and I'm just going to carefully see if I can slide it in where I want it, which would be right about there. All right. There. Now let's deselect it. Uh, I am up. I am down a little bit, so I'll bring it up one. You know what I think it is, too? I think, actually, we ended up getting a stroke on it as well. Yeah. And now it might be, I don't know whether that's, let's go object, ungroup. Let me see if I can get that stroke off of there. Yes, I will get that stroke off of there. There you go. There. And now the only problem I have with this is uh, I want to get this thing to move over just a touch. Let's see if that does it. There. That's not bad. Okay, so now we have what looks like a pretty reasonable looking box. Now, Keep in mind, it was a little tough to do up here, a little bit difficult up here. But down here on the side, you didn't see me do. I'm going to show you a trick, though. Uh, so now I got the front, and I got the side, and I got the top. So if, if I want to give this the illusion, a better illusion of 3D, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually apply a couple of um, gradients or a couple of colors over top of this, which will – give me a second. Give me a second. 
I just want to see if anybody has shown up. Here we go. Yeah, I knew this. Come on. Oh, come on, let me, let her in. What's the matter? Jeez, I can't believe this. I don't know what the deal is. All right, for some reason, I can't get my student in here. Oh, boy. All right, well, anyway. All right, back to this. I, I, I'm sorry. I know you're there. I can't get you in. It just isn't letting me do it. I, I really don't know why this is giving me so much trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to create another side. And I think what I'm going to do with this side is I'm just going to put start off by making it black and white, and I will remove the stroke. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to bring it over, and I'm going to place it up against this edge like this, okay? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably come in and I'm going to set the transparency. Go to Window, Transparency, and I'm going to set the transparency to like 20%. There, that's what I want. Okay, so now that I've done this, I'm going to come in and I'm going to um, get my free transform tool, the, the distort feature, and I'm going to bring this thing up and I'm going to try to snap this thing to the edges just like that and just like that so now what I've done and I probably have to fix it just a little bit it's probably off by just a tiny bit yeah it's off just a hair just like that yeah it's not too bad maybe bring it down just a touch like this there that's good Okay, and he saw, oh, actually, I'm sorry. That one edge came down, too, when I, when I did this. So I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. Oops, you know what? There we go. I'm going to bring this up just a bit. There. Okay, so now you see I've, I've lightened the side. But actually, I think what I want to do is I want to darken that side, I think. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to change that to like a dark gray and hit OK. And then I'm going to bring back the opacity on it until I get it to where I want it to be dark. Oh, and by the way, I'm also going to set the, um, the uh, mode to darken. So now if I come over here, I can just darken, 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 darken until I get the side looking the way I want it. OK? So now I got something like that that looks probably pretty good. Now at the top, I don't want to go through that whole process of distorting this anymore. It was too much of a pain in the neck. So I have another trick. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to, this time again, come back and set it to a, a more of a white color, like that. Hit OK. This time, instead of doing it the other way, which is a pain, I'm going to get my pen tool, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click, and then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click. And I'm going to come over here and click. And I'm going to come over here to where I started and click. And now I've created this shape. And I can go overlay. And or let's try a couple of other settings. Lighten. Yeah, but I don't think that's right. Let's bring it down to about 50. That's not too bad. I don't like lighten very much. Screen. I think actually overlay wasn't bad. Yeah, and let's go view, hide edges, and there we go. 
And now let's go view fit our board and window. And by doing that, I come up with a really nice looking box. It looks pretty good. So really, even if you're even if you're having trouble, even if you're running into problems with your 3D model, and again, I, I did not do this perfectly. I, I kind of slammed it together very quickly. If I was going to really do this, I would probably spend a bit more time with it and make sure, like, uh, if you take a look, I'll zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. Come in here, see how everything doesn't match up. I can actually, if I really wanted to be careful with this, you know, I could come in here and I could grab that corner point, you know, and I could refine that. Whoops, control Z. I guess I didn't get that point. Let me bring it out and really get it. There we go. Let's go view show edges. Yeah, so now I know what I got. I got the wrong one. All right, let's go object hide selection because that's the top one. This is the one that I want. If I wanted to, I could click on that point. And I could just drag that point over until it hits that line perfectly. See? And it's the same with this side. I can click on this side here, and I can drag that corner up until it hits that corner perfectly. And it's the same with this. I actually object hide selection on it as well. This guy here, using the right tool, I can click on it. And I can drag that guy over until it hits right on the corner where I want it. And it's probably got to go a little bit further over, too, right about there. And see, that's a little bit better. And, you know, again, go around, go around your box, go around your box and do this wherever. Go view, fit, artboard, and window. Wherever you need to do this kind of thing, you know, like in the front here, uh, I see that there's a problem with this box. I click on that corner here, drag it over until it's right there. See, maybe I have to bring it up just a touch as well. That's probably pretty good. Come down to the bottom. Let's see what it looks like down to more towards the bottom if that bottom's all right. So I, what I'm saying to you essentially is that you actually can use very simple basic tools, very simple basic tools, the direct selection tool, to come in here and tweak these things and make these things look really tight and really good like that. Bring that over to there. See? And then I see over here, this is way off. So I just come over to that corner with the direct selection tool, direct selection tool, just grab that corner point. Since it's a group, it's going to take and affect everything the same way. So once I select that, I can just drag it over and everything that's grouped together is going to essentially go together over to that point. And I get that look right there. View, fit artboard and window. And you can see this thing is starting to tighten up and look good. Go uh, object, show all, bring back all of my panels. And there's my side and my top. And it looks like a pretty nice box. So again, two different ways to do it. Unfortunately, I wasn't really able to, uh, I wasn't really able to show you the 3D model because the program was just, misbehaving and not letting me do it and I'm very sorry about that but if that occurs don't drive yourself nuts come in and do something like what I did here and by the way like I say I would put something on the side I simply didn't I just did it because I wanted you to see how it was done and I so I did something for the top and I did something for the front I didn't worry about the side very much but you should get the idea from this these are nothing but vector shapes all of these are vector shapes that are grouped together into one piece and then I use the free transform tool and the selection tool the direct selection tool to move the points in position where I want them and I get a really nice illusion of 3d Unfortunately, since it's not rendered in 3D, I can't revolve the box around. I can't move the box around. You're stuck in this position. But that's okay because this is more or less a presentation anyway. If you were going to be doing this, you were going to be doing this to present your visual ideas to somebody. And they don't need to really see it in 3D. They just want to see kind of what the, uh, the effect of the box would be. And I think this more than does it. So. So there you go. That's uh, what I tried to show last night. Didn't have as much luck. Tonight I had a little more luck, so that's it anyway. And uh, now we're going to go on to our, go on to our um, critique. Let me save this just for the heck of it.
as you can see, this still requires a good bit of processing. I'm saving these just for emergency purposes. All right, and let me try one more time to go in here and see if I can get if I can get my students in here. I don't know why I can't do it. Come on. Not letting me bring them in. Yeah, I can't. I don't know. Aggravating. All right. Well, I did try. I, I, I'm sorry. So I got, I got a few things here that um, uh, I want to do critiques on. So I'm going to start off with uh, this one here. It's uh, Angela Aguayas. Uh, I'm going to drag this and drop this in. She sent it to me in Illustrator. And don't worry about that. Let's see what happens here when I open it. There we go. Okay, so we do have an issue with the fonts. So Carrington, this is what I want you all to understand. This is part of the critique. In the future, when you have these classes, notice that I have a missing font, and it says it right here, missing font called Carrington. And it's going to default for a font. It's going to default font substitute for that missing font. I'm not exactly sure. I guess it's the milk chocolate. I'm not sure what it is, frankly. But anyway, this Carrington I don't have on my machine. That's why I mentioned to all of you that when you when you submit your work, what I want you to do is I want to make I want you to make sure that you select all the type that you use in your projects, all of it. And you go up into the type menu here. Let me hit close. Go up to the type menu. And right here it says create outlines right there. So if I have type, and I think I demonstrated this, but I'll show you again. Type. Okay, so I got some type. And now my type, I'm going to make my type big. Let's make it big so you can see what I'm doing here. Here's my type. Okay. You'll notice that while it is active type, it has that little anchor point and it has the line that runs underneath the type. That means that I can select the type and I can change it if I want or I can continue typing if I want, okay? Because it's type. The problem with this this way is if you send this to me and I don't have the font that you're using on my machine, my machine can't display that font, and what it will do is it will substitute it. And that's exactly what's happening to Angela. This is what's happening to your project. I am getting a substitution. So the problem with that for me is that I'm not really able to completely understand your design choices because part of the design choices are, are in fact missing. So that's the first part of my critique for you is that, and this, again, when I do these critiques, I want everybody to understand that this is for all of you. So um, if you don't create outlines for your type, you'll send type to me like this. Now watch, that type is outlined, that type is outlined, that is, that is, I don't know exactly where the font is, but somewhere in here, there's type that is not outlined. I'm not sure where it is. Well, I don't know. Ah, there it is. It's in your logo. Okay, let me show you. There you go. You did not see the, see the outline there? You did not create outlines. Watch what happens, first of all, when I create outlines with this selected. Are you ready? I'm going to go to the object menu, and I'm going to go, oh, I'm sorry, type. I'm going to go create outlines. You see what it did? It created outlines in all the text. So what happened is because you didn't you didn't get this logo uh, created it turned into an outline form. I lost I lost your look. I lost the look you were going for, and I end up with something less than what you really wanted. Let me go zoom out. Let me go zoom out again. And there you have it. That's, there's your problem. 
So I'm, I've lost a little bit of the character of your logo because, and you actually, it looks to me like generally speaking, you executed your logo very nicely. It's just that you forgot to create outlines on it and I lost the text. So every single one of you should remember this for the future. You're going to have classes. You're going to be in classes with other instructors. You're going to come ac across this kind of a thing. Please remember that when you send something to me, there's no guarantee that what I have on my computer is going to be the same as to what you have on your computer type-wise. And if I don't have the, the fonts on my machine when I try to open your project, I'm going to lose some of the fonts. So when you go to submit in the future, you want to make sure that you create outlines for all of your type. And I, and I bet you any money that Angela did try to do that. And I bet you in her mind, she thought, oh, I did it. I got it all. And she didn't think of her logo because her logo was probably created uh, separately and she brought it in and she didn't think to, to take it apart. It was probably done on in another document and then she brought it in and put it in into this uh, layout that she's working with. And when she did that, she forgot completely that it was tight and that's what happened. So, you know, again, I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I just want to make sure that all of you understand that it's really important to do this. So let me, let me zoom this thing back out, fit artboard and window. And one of the things that, first of all, I want to say to you, Angela, that I, oh, and by the way, I'll just show you again here. This is type, create outlines. There you go. And now this is no longer type. You can no longer turn this into type. These are just graphic shapes. But if I send this to you or you send it to me and I don't have that particular font on my machine, it's no more of an issue because it is basically turned into an outline form. Okay. Now, um, I, I tend to like what Angela did here. I, I like the fact that she knows enough to lay copy down in a nice way. I like the fact that she used different fonts here. This is something for all of you to consider. Uh, I also like the fact that she used her logo in a number of places. She took opportunities to place images and elements to make this a nice, round, rounded appearance package. She even came in and kept her nutritional facts to a reasonable size. Some of you had them like completely covering the entire panel, which is totally unnecessary. So again, there's a there's a, a fine hand that goes with graphic design that all of you have to develop. And she has a pretty nice hand at this point. There's a lot of things going on here that work very well. Uh, I even like the fact that on the cover, she's got this cute little kid, which obviously is a picture she got off, off the uh, online. And she did go into Illustrator and she did turn it into out. Um, she didn't outline it, but she turned it into a, um, a vector shape by going up to the object menu and going uh, image trace and making this into an image trace. Now, in reality, this would probably be a real photograph. Uh, but in order for her to get a good result, she turned it into a, uh, a live trace object, and it works very well. You get the idea. And again, this is not, in our particular case, this is not finished art. This is more of a presentation. There is one thing, though, that kind of gets a little bit lost on this panel here, and that is the May, Mayfield Dairy Farms logo. My biggest objection to this is that it, it kind of gets lost here. And surprisingly enough, there's a lot of color going on here. So it's not so much that it's not so much that it it has no color. It has color. It's just that it kind of gets lost in the multitude of colors that's going on behind it. So the question is, how is it possible to um, perhaps do something to alleviate that problem? Well, there is one thing that comes to mind, and that is maybe what we could do is, is offset the path a little bit of this and maybe make a little bit of a white outline around it, and that would maybe help break it away from the foreground. Uh, if this wasn't so complicated, I would just go into my appearance panel, but I can't really do that because there's too many elements going on here. 
So the only way that I could really do that is to go object, expand appearance, okay? And now I have this thing all expanded. And my idea would be to go edit copy, edit paste him back, and then maybe come in here and click on this guy and go object hide selection. And I'm doing this this particular way so that I can kind of, you'll get the idea of what I'm trying to do. Select this thing, go object ungroup, and I don't know whether I have to ungroup it again. Object ungroup. Okay, can't ungroup you. Okay, that's no problem. And now what I want to do is go to the Pathfinder palette. Go to Window, Pathfinder. Let's see, where is it at? Let's see if I can do this. And I want to combine that into one object. And I didn't quite work. Let's see, maybe it's on different layers. Uh, no, it's not. Let's go Object, Ungroup. Well, let's see what's going on here. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, Object. Uh, let's see. There's Pathfinder. You know what? Object expand. There we go. Now let's try it. There we go. And Mayfield object ungroup. Okay, and now expand them. Now let's see if I can do it. Grab this and grab that and go. Okay, good. So now what I've done is I've taken this graphic that she created and I've turned it into one single graphic shape looking like that. And I'm going to fill it with white. I guess because I think white will work. I'm, I'm going to take a shot at this and I'm going to remove that, that edge because I don't want the edge. So now I'm going to go object show all and I'm going to go select next object below. I hope I got the right object. I'm going to object, path, uh, offset path, and I'm going to offset it by six pixels. Let's preview it and see if I got the right layer. Yeah, I do, but I don't think it's right. Let me hit cancel. Okay, let's 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 go object, hide, selection. All right, let's click on this. Let's let's do it this way. Go to Object, Path, and Offset Path, and let's try, let's try, let's just try three pixels instead. Three pixels. Preview. There. Okay, three pixels seems, well, maybe it'll be all right. Let's see. Let's hit OK. Okay, and now we're going to go Object, Show All. There. And now, if you deselect it, can you see what I did? I went in there, and I actually created this breaking area that helps set off the Mayfield. Let's go to the View menu, Fit Artboard and Window. And as you can see, this logo now becomes quite a bit more readable because I have that white area breaking it away from its background. So that's what I wanted. Now you don't need to do it up here and you could do it over here. You could actually come in here now and select this whole thing. Right, let's go edit undo. Let's go object lock selection. And let's select this guy here. And I don't want all this. I just want the little logo. Let's see if I get the logo. I don't want that. Okay, and let's go edit copy. Or let's go object group first. Let's go object group first. Oops, what happened here? I got this involved in this somehow. Well, get that out of here. Let's see if it is. Okay. I think I might be all right. Object group. And let's go edit copy. Edit paste. Where did it go? Uh, you still got stuff involved in this. All right, so you know what? Let's see if I can do this. 
by creating a new layer. Let's go and work on a new layer. Let's drag it up to that layer and let's see what we got. Okay, so that's good. So now I think we're all right. Nope, so I still got these things on that layer. So I want that to go back to these layers. Oh, geez. Let's go object, ungroup. Right, let's drag this back down. Let's try that now. There, now we got it. So this is on, on its own layer. We're gonna go object group. And let's go edit copy, edit paste. Boom, okay. So now I can bring everything back. Let's lock those layers. This is what I want to do. I want to bring this up here now and see how, see how you've got this guy right here against that brown background. We go up here and go view, fit, artboard, and window, and then take this guy here and scale it down. Let's try 50%. I don't know what actual size it is. We'll find out in a minute. That's pretty close. It's probably about 40 or 45. Let's try 45. 45. Try that. And that's probably okay for our purposes. Uh, whoops. Uh, what happened? Did I undo it? 45. What did it? Oh, it, it made a duplicate, didn't it? Darn. Not what I wanted. Well, that's that's pretty good right there. That'll work. So now I'm going to just bring this thing up and place it here. And it looks like it's about the right size. I'm going to go edit cut. Okay, and then I'm going to select this. This is on the lock layer here. Yeah, on that layer here. Let's click on that. And let's delete it. And let's go edit paste in place. Okay, and now, again, just like down here, you see how you've got that little bit of white breaking it off that brown background. You don't need that. See, that's what I'm going for. You don't want it to be like right up against that brown background. By doing what I did, I've created this little white area which breaks it off of the, um, the background. And I did the very same thing a little further down here on the front panel. There we go. Here with this logo right here. Okay, you zoom out. There we go. So my my goal here is to maximize the impact of uh, the dairy farm logo. If you really want to, you can now come in like this and you can go view fit artboard and window. And if you really want to, you can select this logo and you could even come in here and go to the effect menu and stylize and do a nice drop shadow on it. And I can come in here and I can make that say around, oh, I don't know, let's try 30. And let's try darkness instead of color. And let's try um, three pixels by three pixels by, oh, I don't know, let's say one pixel. One pixel. And let's preview it and see what we get. There. Good. And let's hit OK. And let's deselect this and see what it looks like. You see, you get a little bit of a, of a drop shadow on this thing now. And if you really want to, you can come back in, select it again, and go to the appearance panel. And you see how you got the drop shadow there? I can come back in and I can work on that drop shadow and I can set the opacity to a higher level. Or I'm going the wrong way. Let's go uh, to a higher level on the opacity. Okay, and I'm bringing it up, making it darker. Can you see how it makes it darker? Of course, I think that's way too strong, but you know, you can kind of play around with it and get it to where you get, have it the way you want it to look. And if you want, you can bring this thing down and you can bring this thing down, and I guess you have to, yeah, see, this is the problem. This is uh, defaulting. Let's hit cancel. Let's go to the um, object menu. Or let's see here. File, edit, uh, what do we want? I want, um, yeah, file, I think it's edit preferences. Uh, units, that's what we want. General pixels. Yeah, I got pixels. I don't know. I'm not getting pixels up on this, so I guess. Let's try it again. I mean, this is defaulting to it's defaulting to inches. 
I don't know why. I guess it's because the, door, the, the thing is set to inches. But I don't like working with inches. I like working with pixels. So I'm going to try it again. Let's try it with one pixel. And let's try it again with one pixel. And yeah, it's too small. Let's try it with uh, three. Let's try it with three. And let's try something like that. It's probably pretty good. Hit OK. And now deselect it. And if we view fit artboard and window, you've got two things. Can can you guys see? Can you guys see how much more this Mayfield Dairy Farm pops out now that we've done this? I mean, before when we had this thing, it was just those colors against this beautiful little girl with all those colors. But now we have actually done a white area, and we've even got a drop shadow, and you have a much more dynamic presentation of the branding elements, the Mayfield Dairy Farm with the flower on it. So that's my lesson for you uh, all, and what I would like to see you think about when you create these things, using these um, techniques to help you come up with something a little more sophisticated. Uh, Angelus also submitted this one here. So at least let me open it and hit cancel. And see again, if you take a look, this is what the logo looks like to begin with. And if we go back to here, this is what the logo looks like with a little bit of work. So essentially, Angela and everybody, what I did was I went in, took those elements. They were a bunch of different elements. I tried my best to go in there and turn them all into graphic shapes so that I could, um, so that I could then turn those graphic shapes into one graphic shape which I would then go in and offset the path to. And that's what created that little outline of white around everything. It's put behind the logo. And uh, then I applied a drop shadow to it to give it that, that slightly more um, three-dimensional quality. It, it kind of sets it apart from the background picture. So, you know, before and after. Okay, um, and again, if you guys want a better demonstration of this uh, in our in our uh, announcements, I put my hours for Blackboard Collaborate. You can feel free to come in uh, any of those hours, and I will be happy to demonstrate on a much simpler way how I did this again. All right. So thank you very much, uh, Angela, and I and I definitely hope that. Uh, what I showed you and what I did help you, all right? And uh, I guess I'll save this just for the heck of it for now, in case uh, Angela does stop by and I have something to show. This, I believe, is also her. I don't know whether it's the same thing or not. It is. She brought the same thing in. So um, this is basically just another version of what she did and. You know, my, my critique of this is that, generally speaking, it's pretty good. I, now that you, I look at this, this milk here against the white background, you probably could do something a little bit better with that. I don't know. Maybe, you know, you need I, – I, I know that you're working with these theme colors of white, and the girl's got white behind her, and it works really well. And I know the white over here, it works really well. However, that being said, this guy here is just a little bit – on the weak side against the white. And I have a feeling that something is needed over there on that panel. It's not, it's probably not all that much that needs to be done there, but something needs to be done because I think white on white is just a little bit too much for that. So you could maybe think about that. Uh, and again, you know what to do with this. You know what my feelings are with this. Um, so, uh, I, again, I, I'll say that I, I like the way that she's put these elements in here. I, I, here's my impression of what Angela did. My impression is that Angela went and put in her hands a milk container. 
she actually looked at a milk container and she kind of got the ideas of what would be appropriate to put on these panels from a real container. And she might have gotten the information from that container. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she just made it all up. But that doesn't matter. The fact is that by looking at what she did, you do get the feeling that she genuinely went in and took a look at milk cartons. And as a result, she's got something that really does look like it would work for a milk carton. Uh, I wonder whether Angela did a three-dimensional mock-up of this. I'd love to see that. I don't know whether she did. I, I guess she didn't. But I would very much like to see that if she did because this would be a good one to mock up. It might be a little bit of work, but you could do it. So anyway, this is uh, another one. I guess I'm not sure whether this was a duplicate of one. Let me see here. This was uh, – no, that's, that's the chocolate, I guess. And what was the first one? Is that blue? the blue one? Oh, no, she sent two chocolates. Okay, so there's two chocolates. That's what it is. There's two chocolates, and then there's this, uh, hers are alternative, which is 2% uh, milk. Okay, all right, that's good. So, yeah, very nice job. I like it very much, and I like the fact that you did do uh, full panels with a lot of stuff on it, just so that you know that is not unnecessary stuff. That is not stuff that is um, uh, just filler stuff. A client is going to spend a lot of money on this packaging, and they really don't want you to just submit nothing to them. They really want you to submit something to them, uh, and a lot of times you'll have bits of information that they give you that have to be put on there. Unfortunately, when we did this assignment, there's not a whole bunch of elements. There are a few, but there's not a whole bunch of elements that are required there. It probably would have been better if there were more elements, because then this way I'd be able to make you work with those elements. Now, the next two submissions I got here, one is a wine box and the other is a dye line milk carton. And the wine box is, I believe, Philip, let's see, it, uh, Phillips. I'm not sure who that is. Okay, here we go. This is um, Phillips. I, I, I can't remember what her first name is. But anyway, um, I'm going to see if I can open this in Photoshop, or I mean in Illustrator, because I want to see what happens when I do this. Uh, hit OK. All right, not too bad. You fit all in window. Okay, so it did open up. So here's what we have. And as a matter of fact, I remember this afternoon she did model a 3D box. And it looks to me like the way she modeled this 3D box she did a pretty good job, actually. Um, she actually has got her modeling done. And she's, it looks like she's actually managed to put the uh, symbols. And I don't know whether I go to the symbol panel. Uh, no, I don't see the symbols in there. Okay, I'm not. Wait a minute. Wait, whoa, whoa, I did. Here are the symbols. There's one. There's a symbol. There's two. Uh, there's three. And there's four, I guess. So, okay. So, and let's see what she named them. New symbol. New symbol one, new symbol two, and new symbol three. Uh not too original. I, I think you'd be better off to name the symbols a little bit more appropriate for the pieces that you're working on. It looks like something kind of got out of place. Oh, you know what that is? That's a, I know what that is. That, that's what holds that bottle in place, I guess. That's what I think that is. Uh, okay, so let me, let me talk a little bit about this particular piece. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I sent Ms. Phillips a email on this, and I mentioned to her that we have the principles, the crap principles, and I told her that the crap principles tell us that we have to be careful of contrasts. And she has somewhat difficult contrasts going on here. The blue is definitely a little darker than the red, but they are vibrating at a certain level that sort of compete with one another. And what I told her I would like her to do is I'd like her to see if she could somehow or other figure out a way to mitigate that vibrance that's going on there. Think about the colors and the relationships of colors and see if she could come up with something that doesn't quite vibrate nearly as much. Maybe uh, a darker blue or something. It, I don't really want to tell her what to do because she's the creative person. I'm the critic and my criticism of her is that there's a vibrance that's a little bit on the disturbing side that's going on here. And uh, I just think that um, 
she probably could work on on some kind of a an arrangement of colors or color scheme that that just works a little bit better. Uh, she does have Western tape on the side, but uh, I I really don't know what S Y R A H or H R A H R A Y S or S Y R. I have no idea what that's supposed to say. Um, and unfortunately for me, I'm not, I, I think I even said to her, I'm not the brightest bulb in the midway. I would not know what that is. I know it's Western Cape. Now, if I was a wine drinker that was, uh, if I knew what Western Cape was, then I would probably know what that word is. Um, but as it is, I don't know. And, and I think that that's probably the most difficult part of this is that the name, and I, I'm not mistaken. I think she said she made that name up. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I think she said she did. I, all I'm saying is that it, 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 it's not something that I think's a good idea to have because unless you know what that is and how to say it, you're going to feel very uncomfortable asking for it. You won't be able to ask for it because you won't know what to call it. You're just going to be able to ask for a Western Cape wine. And then they're going to ask you what wine, and you're not going to be able to tell them, and they're going to have to start naming names, and then you're going to have to try to figure out what you want. So my opinion of this is that that name, I find it very disturbing. It, it, it just doesn't work for me, uh, and I would like to see if you could maybe uh, at least explain it somehow or work it so that it makes some obvious sense as to what it is. It's very creative. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's a little bit, a little bit remote and perhaps a little too remote. Um, the colors I like, I like blue, red, good colors. They, they really don't uh, offend me other than the fact that they just probably are too competitive. I think what you want to do is you want to see if you could get one to be the predominant and one to be the subordinate. If you could figure out how you want that to go, is your background color going to subordinate to your type color? Is your type color going to subordinate to your background color? You know, this is what you got to figure out. And, and uh, you know, all these elements together, the use of color on your packaging, the, the type faces that you use, the graphic symbols that you employ, the, the words that you use, the actual words that you use, and the elements that you choose all matter. And uh, I just think that it's 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 a decent job it just needs i think it needs some more thought i do think you need to give it some more thought and um there is one other one other small problem that uh i need to mention the the package should have a barcode on it and it doesn't have a barcode on it and I would imagine that somewhere probably on the back or on one of the sides, there would be some uh, other information, you know, like uh, some basic information about the um, Western Cape uh, winery. And also, you would probably want to put on the outside somewhere, probably on the back, the government warning. Because, uh, again, wines require government warning. So there are a couple of elements that probably also need to be worked into this so you know again i'm not i'm not it, I, I you did a good job i like the fact that you went to the trouble of creating two 3d renders on this and it looks like you actually created a a bottle i don't know how what you did with that bottle oh look at that it's very clever of you so what she did literally was she built a part of the bottle how cool very brilliant brilliant there you go. So there's your bottle. Look at that. She's so smart. So you got the bottle top in there. There's your bottle. That's great. I love it. Very clever. This is see. This is what this is what I'm talking about. Presentation is is cleverness. And she really look at this. I'm going to zoom in. This is just great. Look at that. She literally rendered out the top of the bottle. She didn't need the whole bottle. She needed the top of the bottle. So she went in. She rendered the top of the bottle. Look at that. Great. So there you go. I mean, this is what you're this is what you're doing. You're thinking graphically. You're thinking like a visual designer, uh, and you did a great job. And that's a, that's a very that's a very creative thought that you had there. So this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to start thinking 
sort of outside the box. I want you to start thinking, what can I do to improve the overall appearance of my presentations? Because again, you know, there are tons and tons of people out there that do this kind of work. And just like myself, you're going to end up being one more person doing it. And what is going to distinguish you from me from the next person? That's, that's what you have to discover. You have to find what distinguishes you as a graphic designer. One of the things that I will tell you should distinguish you is your control and your ability to work with these programs. Adobe Illustrator is an incredibly flexible program. So it's a lot more um, flexible and a lot more valuable than I think an awful lot of people, and I mean an awful lot of people give, give it credit for. Uh, I use it now every day in the work that I do, and it's just, to me, one of the best programs for doing this work because you can go so many different places with this program. Really, you can. And uh, it, it is a learning program. It is a program you have to learn. You have to take time, and you have to spend time with it, and you have to know where things are and know how to work with these things, and you have to be able to figure out traps that you set for yourself. I mean, here's the thing. Imagine how hard it is for me. I, you saw what I went through when I was working on my projects. You see how I, I have to figure out after doing these things weeks ago, I got to come back in and figure out how I can demonstrate something. I mean, it's not like I made that yesterday. I made it weeks and weeks and weeks ago. So I got to come back and figure out how I want to demonstrate it. And when things go wrong, I have to kind of figure out how I can uh, fix them, if, if, if it's even possible to fix them. Uh, and when it isn't possible to fix them, I have to know when to bail out. And then I got to go look at them later on when I have the free time and I'm not in the middle of a class. And then I got to see if I can fix it and then come back in and maybe show it again because the first time I showed it, I didn't like the presentation of it. So, I mean, this is how this works, and it's difficult as an instructor to do this, but it's equally as diff difficult for somebody who's a designer because you're going to be working on a project. Somebody's going to give you a budget, a time frame. You've got so much time to work on something, and, you know, you've got to use that time efficiently. So you really got to get to the point where you practice with this program, all the programs, but in this particular case, since we're dealing with Photoshop, our illustrator. I want to focus on Illustrator. You have to really learn to deal with this program and get familiar with it. And the more you know about it, the more you realize that there's an incredible array of things that you can do with it. So, so there you go. I mean, I, I give everybody credit for uh, doing what they're doing. I like the fact that you're uh, rendering 3D boxes. I like the fact that you're adding lids to them and adding bottle caps to them, you know, bottle tops to them, and you're doing things like that. I think it's it shows that your mind is working, and if you're doing this level of work now in about a year or two, just imagine where you're going to be, because I, I personally believe that you're going to be someplace really good, and from that point forward, the sky is the limit. So... All right, so there you go. That's what I say about this particular thing. Uh, try to get those elements in place that are missing. You need the barcode. You need the um, uh, government warning. And maybe you could come up with something to talk about Western Cape, just a little bit of information about that, and give some thought to the dominant color and the subordinate color. What is dominant? What's subordinate? See if you could work that out and, and come up with some arrangement of colors that don't buzz quite as much because that, that's really what's going on here. And the other thing too is I, I just, I just don't, I, I'm sorry for not being intelligent enough to understand what S Y R A H is. I just don't, it's Sarah, I, I don't know, S Y R Sarah, I guess, I guess that's what it is. I don't really know. But it's uh, it's a little bit it's a little bit on the remote side. That's probably I guess what I think. So so see what you could do with it. All right. I got one more, and that is this. All right. So this one here. Um, all right. So basically. The cow, even though the cow is a little bit on the strange side, I, I kind of like the cow, and I even think that on some way 
in some way the cow works. It almost works with the with the uh, sort of the X thing that's going on here, you know, leading into the cow and the way the cow's kind of tilted into there. You know, it kind of works for me. So I, I'm not I'm not totally against the cow. I kind of think maybe you could do a little bit more with it, possibly. The idea that there's white running across the middle with the cow sitting in white, that kind of works all right. Uh, I, I seem to recall that when I originally saw this, I believe some of the elements were a little bit bigger, and I believe that she was using this type down here, which is this Asian-y looking type right here. And I, I don't really think that that Asian-y looking type works at all and I would kind of like you to just get rid of that all together and the one thing that I think is the weakest element of this design is the the Mayfield uh, dairy farms it it just isn't well let's let's let me let me do this before I even get to that there's a similar issue with this particular design to the issue that was going on in uh, the last wine box Phillips's wine box, Miss Phillips's wine box, and that is that there's a uh, the crap principle tells you about contrast, and unfortunately, what you have going on here is a contrast issue, which is somewhat similar to the contrast issue that Miss Phillips had with her box, uh, and that is that you've got this this dense kind of salmon color and that's another problem I mean this is like a salmon color I'm not quite sure that I feel salmon color like this and it pretty much is a salmon color I don't really think the salmon color is a particularly milk color I just don't see that as a color I wonder did any of you students go in and take a look at cooler um, Adobe cooler and take a look at the colors that are in cooler and maybe you know did a Google search for chocolate milk or strawberry milk or milk or whole milk or 2% milk and see what kind of colors come up because I would not be surprised if you went in and did that that you would actually get color schemes that would come up and you might find some very creative color schemes that you might like and you might want to use. Believe it or not, even with my experience as a graphic designer, I find myself occasionally going to cooler just to grab something unique and different. If I'm looking for a unique, different kind of approach, I go into cooler and I throw in a couple of buzzwords and I always get colors that come up. And it might be something that will help you to, uh, to get rolling. So here again, I, I just want to point out that I'm not totally satisfied with the use of this salmon color and that blue color in front of it. The other problem is that it's just blue on that salmon. What about a little bit of white? Why can't you use a little bit of white? I mean, why not have the word whole milk in white and maybe the vitamin D in a secondary color? You know what I mean? I, there's, there's a whole bunch of different things that you could do to break this up to get more color into it. Uh, that's the first thing, I guess. The second thing is if you go back to Angela Aguayas and her milk carton, you'll remember that she had all sorts of really interesting little graphic elements scattered around on her package. Now, okay, you do have this thing here, which I'm not exactly sure what it is because I'm not an illustrator. Let me try bringing this in the illustrator and see if I can do that. Let's try bringing it in. Uh, okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so close it. Yeah, so what happened is, here's the other thing too. Since I opened this up in Illustrator, you are using a font that you didn't create outlines for. And because of that, let me see if it's locked. No, it's not. Okay, so what's happening here is those fonts right there, I don't have on my machine. So as a result of that, I can't, you fit artboard and window. I guess this is, Object. Yeah. See, I uh, this is not. I I can't really even have this in in Illustrator because it's not set up where I can actually 
do anything with it. So it's kind of like anticlimactic. So let me close out of here. All right, so you you see when I come back here, there's your font. This font right here was a font that's not available on my machine. So uh, please try to understand this. What I want you to understand for the future, because my class with you is over right now, in the future, and this goes for everybody in the class, it's critical that you know that you want to make sure that when you have bitmaps, see this little girl over here? That's a bitmap. Now, when I opened this up in Illustrator, that bitmap didn't go away, so it must have been embedded. This cow is a bitmap, and it was embedded. It had to be embedded or it would have gone away. This guy right here is probably a bitmap, and it was embedded or it went away. This is a bitmap. It would have been. It would have gone away if it was uh, not embedded. So those images are embedded. Thank goodness she did that. But she did not create outlines on all her type. So what's going to happen next time is, and this goes for everybody in the class. When you have another class, if you submit something to your instructor, my recommendation is that when you're ready to submit it to the instructor, make a duplicate copy of it. Save the original and save the live text but make a duplicate copy and call it whatever the name is. Like this is called Dye Line Milk Carton 2. What I would do is I would go, and this is a PDF. So let's say we're, let's just pretend we're in Adobe Illustrator. You know what? Actually, let me do this. Let me actually show you what I'm talking about because I think that's the right way to do it. So let me come back to Angela's here. Let me bring Angela's back for a second. Okay. Um, and there's a substitute going on here, so no problem. All right, so here's what I would do. So I got DES244, Assignment 3, Angela Aguayas 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, Save As. And in the same place, I'm just going to change this from Angela Aguayas 1 to underscore. So it'll, I'm just adding the word outline, O-U-T-L-I-N-E, outline. And I'm going to hit Save. And I'll update it and hit OK. And now, watch. There. The original is gone, and the outline is out here. So if I select all my text and go type create outline, OK, which I can't, oh, yeah, I can't actually do it. There you go. I created outline on everything. So now everything is turned into an outline. I selected everything. See, I, I just dragged over the whole thing, selected the whole thing and went type create outline. Now in this one, outline, all my text is saved as outlines. That's the one that you would submit to me uh, if the assignment calls for you to submit something in AI form. Uh, I don't need really to have the fonts live. I really need the fonts to show so I can look at it. It's very important that you know this so that when you you know, have these classes and you do these things, uh, you do that. Now, the other thing is you go to the window menu and we have links panel. And in here, you see where it says milk chocolate to ping? There's your ping right there. That's that layer. You see that little graphic right there? That little graphic tells you that that milk chocolate to ping is embedded into the program. So if you, and this is no longer needed to be embedded because this has been converted into a uh, vector shape. So it is no longer a bitmap, but this one wasn't. This one was left as a bitmap, and she embedded this thing by going, selecting the layer, coming up here, and going embed. Now, if I unembed this, I don't want to unembed it because it'll make it go away and it'll give me problems. But if you embed the thing, I don't know what will happen if I unembed it. Yeah, see, it's going to do, it's going to, it's going to take it out, and I don't really want that. So I hit cancel. Uh, you don't really want to unembed it. The bottom line is you want to embed it. So when you bring this thing in, it might not come in embedded. If it doesn't come in embedded, you got to go to the links panel, and you got to look over here, and you got to see if there's that little graphic. If that little graphic is there, then you know it's embedded and you're okay to go. But if that graphic isn't there, then you know it's not embedded, and it's a simple matter to just select the layer, it gets highlighted, come over to the menu, and choose embed. And since this is already embedded, it's saying unembed, 
So you get the general idea of this, okay? So those are the things that you want to know about when you submit stuff to your instructor, especially if the instructor is calling for you to send something in Adobe Illustrator. If you send it as a PDF, you don't have that problem unless, of course, you do what I tried to do, which was to open this dye-line milk carton up in Adobe Illustrator. See, when you submit something as a, a PDF, PDF has the ability to automatically embed all this stuff just for PDF. But if I go into Illustrator with this PDF, I lose that capacity to embed all these things. And what happens is Illustrator does what Illustrator normally does. It looks at the font and says, okay, what fonts is this supposed to be? And that one, whatever that Mayfield font is, I forget what it's called. I've seen it before. Whatever that Mayfield font is, is not on my machine. So right away, it's going to throw up an error message saying, I can't present you with that particular font. So the entire design falls apart. So that's what you, you guys need to know. There's a major difference between an Adobe PDF, which embeds information automatically for you, and Adobe Illustrator, which requires you to do things, hacks, or whatever you want to call them, like creating outlines for text and going to the layers menu, I'm sorry, the links menu and embedding graphics, okay? All right, so that's all I want to say about that. I've, I've said enough, I think. Hopefully you got the idea. Um, so again, back to this. The colors, I, I, I just think that you could probably do more with the colors. Let's keep it simple and let's go from point to point. You could do more with the colors. That's the first thing. I don't think that the color choice of that salmon color is a particularly milk color. It doesn't make me feel milky very well. Um, I, I think that you probably could incorporate more graphics. There's probably some more graphics that uh, could go here uh, very easily. And if you Take a look at what Angela did. You, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I believe that Angela probably took a, a milk carton in her hand and looked it over very carefully. I'm not exactly sure that I would feel that you did that with this particular project. I'm not exactly convinced that you went in and took a real serious look at a, at a regular gallon of milk and see what that gallon of milk had on it and came in and made the effort to try to put those elements on this container. Now, again, you didn't have to put them on exactly the way you saw them on the milk carton, but you could base the way that you created graphics on what you found on that milk carton, which I think kind of is what uh, Angela did with hers. I think she went in and she tried to emulate what she saw on that milk carton to a much higher degree. So that's what I think needs to happen here. This is a little bit sparse in appearance and the one thing I do want to mention to you and everybody is that if somebody if you're fortunate enough to get a company to come to you and, and have you make a milk carton like this they're going to direct you on what they want they're going to give you directions they're, it's not going to be as cold and indifferent as the way you got it in this course you know what I mean if you take a look at the instructions there weren't a lot of instructions there so it, it, it's not like that in the real world in the real world you're working with a team of people, and these people are experts at doing what they do, which is marketing milk. So they're going to tell you in no uncertain terms some of the things that they want you to include in your design. Now, they're going to give you the freedom to come up with the design, yes, but they're still going to have a laundry list of things that they're going to want you to deal with on your milk card. That's why I think it's such an important idea for you to go in and take a look at a real milk carton to see what a milk carton looks like and try to make your milk carton look as much like that as possible. So that's that criticism. Uh, the other criticism I have for this is that you do not have very clear and powerful marketing identity for Mayfield Milk Dairy Farms or Mayfield Milk and Mayfield Dairy Farms. I mean... The words Mayfield Milk and Dairy Farms are no bigger than the, 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 the font that you have here, the font that you have here, and the font that you have here. And I have to tell you flat out, uh, whole milk, it's important to say whole milk, but it's much more important to identify Mayfield Dairy Farms in a big way. That's how 
uh, branding works. And the branding elements on this particular project are weak. If you, if you were to keep that cow and work that Mayfield Dairy Farms into a much more powerful and dynamic branding element that worked with the cow, you would have something far more successful than you have now. I, I, don't, mean, I don't mean to come across sounding rough on you, and, but it's part of what I have to do. I mean, I have to impress upon you that when you're dealing with branding elements, there's a, a, there's a hierarchy of elements. There are a hierarchy of, of important elements that you have to deal with. The uh, symbol is important, that cow, and the, and the cow is kind of cute. I think it has potential. It might not be fully realized, but it does have potential, and you probably could pull it off if you work a little harder with it. But the Mayfield Dairy Farms logo falls, as a matter of fact, I, I hate to say it to you, but the words whole milk appear to be a larger size font than the Mayfield Dairy Farms. And to be totally honest with you, uh, this is subordinate to that. This is Mayfield Dairy Farms is your biggest guns on your entire ship. I'm talking metaphorically. So the Mayfield Dairy Farms should be the biggest thing that you see and the most bold thing and the most pronounced thing you find on your uh, milk carton. They're not here. And the other thing, too, is, you know, you're using the same font for Mayfield Milk, Dairy Farms, and then, of course, over here, Dairy, Dairy, Drink Up. It, it, it's, all, it's all too kind of simplified. you got to get a little more complex with this. you got to get a little more flavorful with it. It's almost like cooking. you got to add some more spice to this. That's really what it comes down to. Um, the other thing that uh, I, I think you did right was you came in here and you got daily drink up, enjoy a tall glass of milk anytime. This is kind of what you want to do. This is kind of what everybody wants to do. Come up with some little statement like this. You got a girl here. Good. She's drinking milk. Good. The problem is this is too wide. This should be narrower. And this girl should somehow be integrated up into here. You don't stick the girl down in the corner and the text up here. You have to kind of integrate your elements a little bit better. That's really what it is. And as far as this goes, you've got all these nutritional facts stuck on one panel. I wouldn't do that. I would maybe, you know, uh, move them around and, and, and add them in. I certainly wouldn't put them on the front, and I wouldn't put them on the back. But I might, you know, modify them and get them on both sides somehow. You know, like you could have possibly put this. You could have also... You could have also probably put the um, barcode down on the bottom to just simplify it a little bit. So really, I think in this particular case, there's just a little bit of uh, rearranging that's got to go on here. I definitely think that what you got to do is you got to take your uh, Mayfield Dairy Farms and you've got to pump it up and make it really the dominant issue of this package. That is second to none on this page. Matter of fact, the cow is secondary to the Mayfield Dairy Farm. The cow is just a nice little graphic that associates itself with milk and the dairy farm. The Mayfield Dairy Farm's logo or type is the number one element on the page. And to be totally honest with you, in terms of hierarchy, in terms of size, in terms of coloration, in terms of uh, presence, the Mayfield Dairy Farm's in this particular case, is, is very weak. And that's what you have to focus on. Number one, bringing that Mayfield Dairy Farms up to logo uh, size and proportion, which it isn't right now. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm trying to say as much as I can about it, hopefully, so that it'll make an impression on you and you'll know how to approach going in and, and fixing it. So, you know, there you are. I mean, there's things that you could do to make this thing better. I would, I would think about that first and foremost. One of the things that I would definitely do is go and get yourself a gallon of milk to look at. Even if you're not going to buy it and have it, go into a store and stand there and look at it and maybe, maybe make some notes, either some mental notes or a couple of rough sketches on some paper. Write down some words, buzzwords that you see on the milk cartons that you look at. 
take a look at how the name of the milk company or the milk product is displayed on the packaging um, so that you get a sense of proportion and how the correct way to emphasize things and the correct order in which things are emphasized um, in a real in a real world product situation so that you can come back in and apply that kind of thinking to what you got here also as I say I don't know why you're using this font here this font just is not really it's it looks like it looks like Chinese restaurant it just looks like Chinese restaurant so I would get rid of that altogether this Mayfield um, milk I don't know I suppose you might be able to use it but I certainly think you can make a better choice uh, I do like the whole milk vitamin D added I think that just looks fine that this looks more like what you'd expect to see I somehow think this graphic can be made to work so those elements kind of have potential I like this this element over here I just think you made it too wide and this little girl sitting down the corner here just does not integrate very well with your overall panel look I think you need to stay away from these edges and sort of go towards the middle a little bit more with your elements see if you could do something nicer with the arrangement of these elements over here and um, see if you could uh, from the standpoint of looking at a real package fill in some of the dead space and also think color think color very seriously think how I can make this thing pop a lot more visually what can I do to make this thing more dynamic because right now it kind of comes off a little bit on the flat side because you're dealing with this sort of a salmon -y color and then you got this blue color which does vibrate a little but you know there's like a whole war going on between that that salmon color and that whole milk and if you hold your eyes just the right way you almost can't read what's on it because the colors fight to such a degree they clash to such a degree that you can't really you know tell them apart all that much and you really don't want that in the store you want your package to shout out in a very positive way to people and make it compelling and make it so that the people who look at it are drawn to it and maybe will come and choose that milk because there's probably going to be four or five different varieties of milk in the case with this so what's going to make yours jump off the shelf what you do to the graphics and that's what the graphic designer is all about you know working with these elements and coming up with uh, a really sophisticated approach to this and you know bear in mind you all are learning so you know what I'm trying to tell you are things that I believe you should need to hear as somebody who's learning how to do this I when I was learning I had people tell me very much the same things uh, and you know again I heard it for years and there are still people I'll, I'll do things now and I'll still have people criticize the work that I do I've been doing this now for over 40 years and I still got people come and criticize my work people some people who think they know more than I do even come in and tell me what they think um, I'm doing or what I'm not doing you know so I mean this is part of the whole process and again it, it's a learning experience and every one of you as students are in a particular position uh, where you know this and you know that and you don't know this and you don't know that and you're learning still you know take criticism think about criticism look at what you do most importantly try to have fun with everything that you do I think and I'm not saying this has anything to do with the piece I'm looking at right here but I noticed that a couple of the submissions that I got I really got the feeling that the people did not enjoy doing what they were doing at all and as a matter of fact I even think one of the students wrote a note saying that they did not like doing the project and you know I work for a company right now uh, I'm in the marketing department as a graphic designer in their marketing department I'm actually I am I am their marketing department and I do their graphic design for them and these people they sell all kinds of different wood wood floor color coverings and vinyl floor coverings and and to be totally honest with you on a certain level I mean what could be more boring I mean I'm sure there are things that are more boring but you know the the classic they used to say well you know I'm a, I'm a graphic designer what do you do for a living I sell hot dogs oh really you sell hot dogs well you know I mean I sell floor coverings for these people I come up with graphic designs for their floor coverings so on a certain level it's kind of boring but uh, on the other hand it's also a challenge 
And it's also something that as a graphic designer, you know, you sit down and you say to yourself, I know an awful lot about graphic design. What can I do to take the knowledge that I have and apply it to this particular base of products and come up with something that's really unique that maybe will work for these people and get them more sales as a result of it. And that's what it's really all about. I mean, you're not a painter. You're not a drawing person. You don't, you know, you don't do sculpture. You don't do paintings and you don't show in galleries. Usually you get paid to sell products. And that's essentially what you're doing here. You're trying to come up with a design to sell a product, a milk product, and you're learning. And I hope that some of my discussion tonight has given you something to think about because um, that's really what my intention for tonight was to do that. Uh, again, I'm very sorry that people weren't able to get in here. I, I just don't know what's going on. I'm going to call my associate dean and talk to them, explain what happened. Um, I'm a little annoyed by it. But anyway, uh, it would have been a little more lively if you guys were able to show up. I know at least one person tried to get in. I wasn't able to get them in. So that's it for tonight. I'm basically done. Um, I will remind you that I am available tomorrow night and on Thursday and on Friday and on Saturday. And I'm not going to go through, well, you know what? I do have enough time to do that. So here's, here are my hours tomorrow from 5 o'clock to 11 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time. That's Wednesday, 5 to 11 p.m. Please feel free to come in for critique or discussion or if you want me to demonstrate something that I that I poorly demonstrated in one of my live ses sessions and you think maybe I could do it better, come in and ask me and I will show you how to do it. Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, come in. I, I will be in Blackboard that day. Friday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., Friday. And Saturday, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. So those are my blackboard hours. Please feel free to come and visit me uh, or come and get some help, whatever you need. That's it for tonight. Thank you. I'm going to end it here. And you all have a good night and uh, good luck with the rest of your assignment.